Cooperative learning is a catalyst that changes the culture of the college classroom from a passive environment for learning to an active one. I found that dress the latter, but we don't know how accurate that is. I mean, we, there's not enough information offered by this right here for us to decide if that's The professor is critical in creating this change. Whereas in traditional college settings, a professor wrestles with materials and information, in the cooperative classroom, the professor must create the situation where students wrestle with the information and along the way learn the teamwork skills necessary for success in today's workplace. To the student, this change may seem like a simple and refreshing diversion from the passive atmosphere of the lecture, and that's good. But to instructors, this change to a cooperative culture is complex and must be learned and practiced. The key to a successful cooperative classroom is planning and execution. The professor's role in cooperative learning includes making decisions and planning academic work well before class time, setting the academic tasks in a clear and understandable way during the class, monitoring and intervening while students are working to assure accurate work and team skills, evaluating and processing the work after the tasks are completed in order to assess student progress. Making your classroom a cooperative one begins long before the first bell rings. When we talk about planning, we're really talking about making decisions. In planning for your cooperative classroom, you need to specify academic and collaborative objectives. What academic and or collaborative skills do you want students to learn or practice in their groups? Start with something easy. Decide on group size. Students often lack collaborative skills, so start with groups of two or three students. Later, advance cautiously to fours. Assign students to groups. Heterogeneous groups are the most powerful, so mix abilities, sexes, cultural backgrounds, and task orientations. Assign students to groups randomly or select groups yourself. Arrange the room. The closer the students are to each other, the better they can communicate. Group members should be knee-to-knee -knee and eye-to-eye. -eye. Plan materials. Materials can send a sink or swim together message to students if you give only one paper to the group or give each member part of the material to learn and then teach the group. And finally, assign roles. Students are more likely to work together if each one has a job which contributes to the task. You can assign work roles such as reader, recorder, calculator, checker, reporter, and materials handler, or skill roles such as encourager of participation, praiser, and checker for understanding. Now, tell the people in your base group that you wish them good luck on their activity this morning and then please find your group with whom you are going to teach about coherence. Good luck, guys. What we're going to do to prepare for your teaching today, what we'll do to prepare for your teaching today, I would like for you all to meet with somebody from another group who's teaching the very same concept you are. For example, one person is going to teach time order to the others. One will teach space order, and one will teach order of importance. I'm going to give you five minutes prior to your teaching to meet with somebody who is prepared to do what you are so you can share notes and tips and perhaps get a little bit of information from this other person to take back to your group. Two heads are better than one. This is, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six groups. Let's do this. Let's put together the people from these two groups, these two over here, and these two. I want you to determine the truth or falsity of evidence that is presented to you, and you can kind of look at yourself as a jury member. However, I'm going to assign some specific roles for you to do 
so we can, uh, you know, get more out of this uh, particular project. Number one, you are the reader recorder. You will read that uh, assignment that I've given you. You read it aloud to the other members where they can understand, uh, you know, what you're saying. And then you will record whenever there's time to record an answer. You'll also record that, but it'll be a group, uh, a group uh, answer. Whenever uh, your group decides that uh, this evidence is probably true or true beyond a reasonable doubt or probably false, when there's group agreement, then you will add that answer to that sheet, that handout number one. The analyst checker for understanding, I've given the second handout, and this is the definition of the terms. This is the way that you will rate that evidence. Now eventually, when you get to the very end of that project, you will have to determine whether that person is guilty or not guilty and support it with a, uh, the supporting uh, hypothesis. This person is guilty or not guilty and for this reason. I'd like for you to keep, always keep that in mind when you're going through this uh, particular uh, project. Uh, number three, I'd like for you to be the encourager of participation. Now, this is a group assignment, and everybody should participate. So I like number three. Well, number threes, hold their hands up. You will encourage participation between all members. Make sure that all members are participating in this project. And keep these things in mind when you're working together, that you want to contribute your ideas. You want to encourage uh, participation, each and every one of you, you know, your fellow students. Uh, you want to check uh, for understanding, whether you're understanding the material as you go through it, and make sure that every member of the group understands that. Not just one or two, but every member of the group. Make sure that they understand exactly what you're going to record. And uh, give each other direction. You know, um, be the jury foreman, as it were. Give each other direction, keep it organized, and keep it, keep it going. Notice how the professor's role changes from explainer to a guide that monitors the groups of students as they interact. This is the fun part. While students are working, the professor circulates to see whether they understand the assignment and the material, give immediate feedback and reinforcement, and praise good use of group skills. If students are having trouble with the task, you can clarify, reteach, or elaborate on what they need to know. And once in a while, if students are having trouble with group interactions, you can intervene to suggest more effective procedures for working together or more effective behaviors for them to engage in. Okay, excuse me, you know, this one is the most probable. This is almost absolute truth here. Okay. okay. Our question with this was, uh, it's going into the, the plane found mm -hmm. uh, that dressed the ladder, yeah. but we don't know how accurate that is. I mean, we, there's not enough information offered well, by this right here for us to decide if that's as accurate as, as well, a shell casing um, from a gun or... You know, when uh, the evidence technicians, they get, if, if a knife was used, mm -hmm. either to cut a, this or to cut you know, they can, they can study that knife and they can determine uh, whether that knife actually uh, made that cut. <coughs> they can do that. Well, a plane is a uh, blade underneath, you've seen, right. and they make uh, probably certain striations and uh, certain cuts that uh, other planes may not, so it, it might be able yeah, but, to be but, determined. But like he was saying, suppose, suppose well, then, you know, the, okay. uh, you've got two different people making putting different pressures on the plane in order to make the cut. Okay, then you would rate that then uh, mm, probably true, maybe, I don't know, what do you think? Or maybe, maybe indifferent, then uh, if you can't, if you can't, then, you know. We were going with indifferent because we couldn't. Okay, uh, that's fine. No, okay. that's your decision. Okay. Do you all agree with that? Yeah. That's, that's good. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's good. You get two brand new planes off the same manual. Finally, the professor must provide for evaluating and processing. It's easy to run out of time, so plan ahead. 
the professor must evaluate and assess how well students completed the task, give feedback, process how the group functioned, and provide closure by reinforcing student learning, summarizing major points in the lesson, and reviewing important facts. Take out a sheet of paper. You need not put your name on it. Answer those two questions and give it to me. What you learned today and what you expect to learn in this class. The pulses, yeah. The pulses? Yes, yes, yeah, I think so. Okay. At least that he had something to do with the... Perhaps. Now let's review the professor's role in cooperative learning. We want to plan the lesson. We want to explain the lesson. We want to monitor and intervene. And we want to evaluate and process. Professors who decide to change their classrooms into cooperative environments must put time and energy into learning and practicing their new role. Yet the effort is most rewarding for professors and students.